everyone. Today we have with us here the legend himself, Karan Gokhani. So hi and welcome today. How are you? But that was too much of an introduction. <laughs> so you are both a chef as well as a founder of this restaurant, mm -hmm. featuring these Sri Lankan dishes, yeah. these memories that you have taken with you, as well as the author of this cookbook, Hoppers yeah. itself. Yeah. So how does it feel to be here in Sri Lanka as someone who has featured these Sri Lankan recipes? I think Sri Lanka has always felt like being back home. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about Colombo, the first time I came here in 2009, it reminded me so much of my home. So I grew up in Mumbai, Bombay in India, and it's a city by the sea. So somehow, you know, walking by the by golf is green in the evenings, just feels like walking in Bombay on the, in the evenings. And I think today I have more friends here than I have in any other country in the world. So yeah. it definitely feels like coming home to a great extent. So I understand that Sri Lanka has great memories for you. Yeah. But what about Sri Lankan food specifically has made yeah. you interested in it? So I think the first time I came down, I stayed with a friend mm -hmm. and her mom is one of the best cooks I know. Okay. So I ended up eating a lot of Auntie Sharika's food yeah. and um, she made some of the best crab curry. Mm -hmm. And I think it just left an impression. And you know, the reason we do any restaurants or any concept is because in a way selfish because it's the food we don't get in the way we want it to be. So yeah. we wanted to create a restaurant that gives us the Sri Lankan food that we would like to eat. And obviously we then go out and experiment and we bring in some more dishes from South India or we tweak a few dishes. So basically the restaurant is a representation of our kitchens, our homes and dishes that we miss. So talking about go. food that you miss, yeah. here we have some great hoppers coming along as well. Exactly, I can feel them on my back. <laughs> Thank you for making them. And we have a couple of condiments as well as uh, Sri Lankan um, go-to sambals that you can yeah. try these hoppers yeah. with as well. So I hope yeah. you're excited. I've seen them. I'm very nervous about some of them. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, also talking about this whole experience of a restaurant, what is the most important lesson you've learned starting a restaurant featuring Sri Lankan dishes? For me, authenticity is something that is a very vague term. Just because you're born in a place doesn't make it authentic because you can then still not represent the cuisine or the people well. So for me, it was a big thing and I wanted to make sure that I live, eat, sleep, drink my brand and this culture that I represent. Sri Lankan in this case, but it could be of any culture that doesn't represent your culture. I think you really need to deep dive. I need to, as honestly as possible, learn about it, represent it, and be honest about it. Don't go out and talk about things you don't know. So. It's really impressive that you've gone that extra mile to make sure that you're being true to the culture that you're representing at both your restaurant as well as the book. So, with that being said, I think the hoppers are ready. We have three hoppers here. So Lovely. Look at that hopper. It's perfect. So what do you want to try it with first? I love the sambals, obviously the lunumiris, lunumiris with an egg hopper, one of my favourite combinations. Yeah. You know, Sala, at the restaurants we also serve them with curries. With curries? I mean, I know you eat yes. them with curries here yeah. as well, but there, one thing I don't like to see is when people start loading the hoppers and filling it up, oh, because very no. often people think it's like a cone. This is interesting, I want to see what that is. Mm. You're lucky I like Marmite. <laughs> I know that's ketchup and I cannot get myself to do that. So I'm not going to dip into the ketchup that's because that's a combination I'm not going to have. I mean, I like ketchup, but not with a hopper. Yeah. Um, Lunumiris, love it. Mm. Is the trick again, no? Yes. Yeah, mustard cream, thank you. <laughs> How is it? Yeah, I don't mind mustard. You don't mind mustard? I don't mind mustard. So, so um, far, a fan of everything except the ketchup. Which I haven't dipped into. Yes, no. that's all right. And then, <laughs> Kito. Lovely. That is honey. You're right. Yeah. I, personally, I would eat a bit Kito rather than honey. All right. I okay. love Kito. Yes, I think it's um, more. Um, it's more. It's from here. Yes. Tell us what you think of that. What's your favorite? My hopper favorite combination? Uh, is, of course, Simi Sambal. I think nothing, sambal nothing beats a traditional Simi Sambal and Hopper's combo. Mm. It's a jam, some sort of jam. Yes. <laughs> And I think since we've tried out a couple of uh, combos, what mm -hmm. is your go-to favorite combo? I think I already told you, milk and milk jaggery. And jaggery. That's so a dessert. That's, that's I've got a sweet favorite. tooth, so I would eat okay. dessert over mains any day. All right. And for me, that's my favorite thing. Next, talking about your book, sure. can you tell us a little bit about the book itself? My recipes are my biggest secret. I'm never going to share the recipes with anyone. If I share the recipes, there won't be a restaurant left, right? <laughs> and 2000, sort of 20, obviously when the pandemic happened, you realize that actually what you're based on is so fragile and things can just go in one day. 
and it was a conversation with a friend who then helped me write a little bit of this as in she helped me test the recipes um and she said you know i have this recipe book from a famous restaurant and actually that makes me want to go back to the restaurant even more because i cook it at home it's never the same <laughs> not because they haven't given you the recipes but just cooking at bulk cooking in a restaurant kitchen is very different from cooking in a home yes um and that got me thinking and i said actually that's brilliant so then i started working and as i do most things when i get into something i do a deep dive um do did a deep dive into into publishing understood all about how the process works uh, obviously the recipes were the easier bit because we had already been cooking for so long we knew this cuisine well it was more the stories and then i wanted this to be then i kind of asked myself okay what should this book be should it be a book on sri lankan cuisine but why the hell would anyone buy a book by an indian guy yeah. on sri lankan <laughs> food so i said it should be a celebration of our story and i wanted it to be almost like a scrap book of my memories and experiences in sri lanka both before hoppers and after hoppers the restaurant the restaurants we've got three of them so it's got stories about my friends in there um it's got stories uh, it's got recipes that we've cooked out in remote parts of the country when we were traveling it's got some travel advice i won't say advice it's actually just snippets mm -hmm. we've got qr codes in there because we've got videos yeah. so i think it's really come together beautifully with a team that understands every element and you know sees my vision but then brings in their own i think the next question that leads me on is also you know um how do you combine the traditional flavors of sri lankan food and also making sure there's a modern fusion to it and where do you draw the line when combining these um recipes and what makes mm -hmm. it traditional and what makes it maybe this is somewhere we shouldn't go to <laughs> for us the way we approach it is authenticity is key dishes of you know the dishes that we have from sri lanka are very authentic the hoppers we spent a long time developing the dosas are very south indian so we got south indian recipes So most of our recipes at the restaurant as well as in the book are authentic. But then there are some natural recipes. There's a chicken curry tray bake in here where it's basically a roast chicken mm -hmm. which is something very popular in the in the UK. Yeah. Put a whole chicken in, put vegetables around it, put all the spices and then you roast it. Yeah. You take it out, you put coconut milk and you put some um stock and the curry actually forms at the bottom. Yeah. So think about the western technique of doing a roast chicken with gravy. Here I've done a chicken curry but with a whole chicken preserved all the elements of a good curry have all the ingredients in there and it works so it's not it's not trying to be fusion yeah. it's just something that naturally worked well together i think now it comes down to advice to young chefs who are there i'm sure there are many sri lankan chefs who want to do the same who want to take sri lankan culture abroad and uh, start their own restaurants so what would your advice be to these young chefs i think um <clears throat> i don't think i'm in a position to give advice to young chefs <laughs> I was a lawyer and then I made a career shift. I feel you just need to be authentic to yourself. I know authenticity has been a big theme of this chat, but find a topic or find a theme that you really enjoy. Don't look for something in the market. There will all often you might go to a great restaurant one day and be like, "Oh wow, that was amazing. I need I why don't I just recreate this back in my city or change the version and create it in a different area?" Don't do that because somewhere down the line you can copy everything. you can even poach some of the staff but somewhere down the line people will call you out yes. and you won't even have fun mm. the point of doing a restaurant should be to have a good time to have fun and to sort of throw out a little bit of your personality into the space you create into the menu and into the food or into the book you write yes. and if you don't actually feel that and believe that it's never going to come out you can get the best designers you can get the best manager you can get a good chef they'll all eventually leave and it'll, you'll be left with an empty building with no heart and soul so do something that means something to you live breathe eat that drink that go out into the world and research that because you're going to enjoy doing that and then bring it back in your own sort of expression i think that's a great way to end today's conversation as thank well thank you i've enjoyed it so much so thank you thank and you thank for you for the hoppers thank you uh, for fantastic. being here and hope you have a great time in sri lanka thank and you. once again we have the hoppers cookbook here with us yeah. and also the restaurant in london Absolutely. hoppers so hope those who are watching will of course take a read and also go and visit the restaurant please and reach out to us if there's don't tell me if there's any mistakes but if you are cooking <laughs> tag us in your pictures uh we've got all the social handles out there so hoppers london my personal one is current cooks yes of course so thank you thank you once again have a thank good day thank you for having me here